Hello and welcome to another episode of Emacs Chat. Today we have Sali from ergoemacs.org. Uh, and he's, you know, he'll tell us lots of interesting things about custom keyboards and key bindings and uh, publishing with Emacs and so forth. Sa, hello and thank you so much for joining us and thank you for all the work that you've been working on as well for Emacs. So, tell, actually, hey, before I do dive into this entire Emacs thing, tell us a little bit about your life outside Emacs. What are you interested in? Okay, I'm a big nerd, so I am interested in math. I want yeah. to be great in math, um, and so basically, math and math and programming, and that's about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. And I was looking through your config earlier, and it does have you know you have lambda symbols and epsilons and all of that stuff. So uh, it would be great to hear more about you. Yeah, Unicode. I love that. those math symbols. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Emacs. You've been doing Emacs for a really long time, I think. Or at least I, I remember running into you uh, even when I was starting to learn Emacs years and years ago. So what got you interested in Emacs in the first place? Oh, Emacs. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting question. And I remember you in 2006. That's the first <laughs> time I saw you. I don't I don't remember if you remember, but I saw you on IRC. Yeah, I uh, so, remember that. So Emacs. Uh, I got into Emacs around uh, 1998. That's when uh, I started to uh, do web dev. I started to learn Perl, actually, Perl and Unix stuff. Um, and I, I got to Emacs because of Unix. Uh, mm -hmm. They are kind of you know together because Emacs is usually on, on Unix. And they, it's just fascinating because you know uh, I'm interested in, in the history of computing. So Unix is a big big player there, and I just read about it in you know Unix history and also Lisp history. Mm -hmm. So I you know I remember there's a you know O'Reilly book on uh, Emacs and and especially uh, free software uh, the well Emacs and GNU the GNU head the animal. <laughs> so I thought, what what kind of strange thing is that you know? And I look you know the preface in lots of places they have a GPL manifesto of free software foundation. I, I thought. Oh, this is odd. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, so eventually, I learned Unix, and I I worked in the uh, web dev um, e-commerce uh, field. So, I started I started to use Emacs like um, uh, 1998, like almost daily. Wow, but, yeah. that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, 1998. Yeah, that's the dot com days. Yeah, that's the uh, good old days. Mm hmm. And what's kept you interested in Emacs all this time? You know, that's that's the, the, well, I can't even do the math anymore. But you know, what have you liked about it? Oh, it's uh, I just I guess the geekiness is part of it. I mean, the, it, it's got the entire documentation. I mean, well, they what they call it, the um, self-documenting. Um, uh, uh, well, we have to look at the Emacs manual, <laughs> self-documenting. Whatever system you know, um, so so I I began by uh, reading the tutorial in Emacs like Control H T I think yeah. yeah so you know like everyone else and you know it's yeah, I just flow through and read everything and oh one important thing about Emacs is that I love it because it's Lisp that's like like I I program in Mathematica before and I'm interested in you know artificial intelligence and all that you know. Uh, Computer science stuff. So, but I heard about it, uh, but about Lisp, you know, artificial. I mean, it's heavily associated with uh, artificial intelligence. So, but it's in Emacs. So that's how I, uh, I have a strong. I mean, it's a strong attraction. Like I just started to learn uh, Emacs. I, you know, I want to learn it really well. Mm -hmm. And you've customized yeah. Emacs so, quite thoroughly. So, so for example, with Ergo but, Emacs. Yeah. What got you started? In, you know, what got you interested in changing all the key bindings and uh, and really changing how Emacs works for you? Uh, I started customizing only only in like uh, four year, five years ago. You know, like the first five years of Emacs, I pretty much followed everything. I, I I pretty much don't do any customization at all. And I yeah, it's strange. I know, but I. I also don't even. I mean, I don't even know Lisp. You know, I started to learn a little bit Lisp in 2006 only. Yeah, but it, be, before that, you know, 1998 to 2006 is pretty much all in terminals and uh, follow everything. You know, by the default keys. Wow. So for the key binding, I 
you know the I think I think I started because you know back back in even early I you know I like Vorac so back in like 1994 I started to 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 use Vorac I know you also use uh, type you uh, Vorac you type so fast like 117 hundred something I read it the other day it's, oh my god my best speed on QWERTY back then is only like 90 word per minute which is pretty good. I mean, you know, a lot of people would love to be able to type at ninety. But so, so if that's if that's what's on QWERTY, how fast are you now in Dvorak? Oh, my Dvorak is not very fast. I would, you know, if I test I, last time, I you know tested maybe uh, ninety would be the maximum almost. You know, if I want to go beyond ninety, I have to like really practice like a, a month or something. So because anyway, you know, I'll, when yeah. it comes to when it comes to programming, the bottleneck is not really typing speed. It's how, yeah. how fast we think, and I'm very slow at that. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so uh, so you changed keyboard layout, and then you uh, but you, you still continue to use Emacs with very little customization for eight years. And then what got you interested in in learning Lisp and customizing it further? Oh, okay. So, so around 1996, uh, I mean, I mean, around 2006, I discovered IRC. I mean, it's much older than that, but I didn't use it until 2006. I joined, I joined the Emacs uh, IRC group, and there are just huge amount of uh, things I don't know. Like when you, I'm when I'm on IRC, people tell me, I, I, I was thinking, you know, I know all this. I read. I've been using Emacs for five years, but they, they are just. Constantly, always, you know, saying things like, "Oh, I didn't know that, and that is that is useful." Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's uh, that that kind of uh, got me started to learn this. You know, like you know, they this is something useful. You can do it this way, and I started to put in my init, and you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, kind of seeing other people's questions or talking about the functions that people are using. And then how do you go from borrowing small snippets of other people's config to writing a whole lot of customizations to really change things around? I guess that happens like gradually. You know, you know, I started, you know, before I was like, I don't want to put stuff in my init because, you know, you, you, you kind of get into this Emacs mindset, you know, it's like a black hole. You're gonna spend all your life in it. Like, I, you know, if I, I know I've read people, you know, they customize Emacs this and that, and and I was thinking like before I was, I'm not gonna do that. I, this works for me. I mean, playing Emacs is just fine. But but beginning in 2006, I started to do that. Uh, yeah. So it's scratch gradually. Yeah. It it began with writing notes. You know, I started my Emacs blog about that time as well. Like at that time I want to uh, write a lot of math symbols, you know, mm -hmm. Unicode. Like um, Unicode is not popular at, that popular at that time, but you have to like figure out how do you get Emacs to display, you know, very many symbols. So I I did that and I post on the web, you know, uh, small notes, it began that, that way. And, and it just grew, uh, yes. grew larger. Your blog. How does how does your blog work? What you know? It, I I think it's just HTML or. Oh uh, yeah, you... yeah. I I kind of I write raw HTML. Uh, back in the 1990s, I used uh, Microsoft Word, and you know, I just type <laughs> raw HTML. And uh, then with Emacs, I still pretty much. Okay. I, yeah. I I still start with begin with typing raw HTML. Then there's the HTML mod. That's uh, you know default uh, basic uh, mod. So there are some commands there that you can insert various kind of ta uh, tags. So I I use that I use that very well. And uh, but gradually I find it not adequate. You know for you know for you know I want to add some other tags it doesn't have. So I started to uh, the the Elise code for that is pretty simple. So I started to write that. You know. So then it just grew, you know. I then I want to do something else. I want to press the key and and delete this tag or something, or find the nested tag, and then yeah, it, it just grew. Yeah, you've written hundreds and hundreds of pages about Emacs, so it's you know it's it's quite interesting to go through your archive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's a habit. It's <laughs> I I got sucked into Emacs. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And so you're you're constantly learning about Emacs. What are some of the resources that you use to learn more? You know, where do you where do you find all these interesting things that you write about? Uh, let's see. In in the past few years, I haven't really read much about other people's work. But before, I mean, there's IRC and uh, yeah, during that time, IRC is greatly helpful. Um, but there, there are there are other resources. I kind of th oh, oh, oh Emacs Wiki. Yeah, Emacs Wiki was uh, was uh, very helpful. So you know, and and Emacs Manual. Uh, oh oh, and the other important resource for me was uh, news groups. Oh. Uh, uh, GNU. I mean uh, GNU. Emacs. Help. I think. And before that, it's just comp. Emacs. So I spent a lot of time there. Yeah. <laughs> and also arguing about Emacs stuff. Yeah, you're quite the controversial person in the Emacs community. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. you know, it's good for for at least some people to have strong opinions about things because then everyone gets to think about that. And one of those, you know, I guess, controversial things that people are curious about is is you know changing all these key bindings or adding, uh, ch changing the way that that Emacs works. Um, but before we dive into that, I was curious about uh, the, the custom keyboards that you've also been playing around with. Oh yeah, yeah. I meant to show you. Uh, so I'm using this keyboard. It's called uh, Truly Ergonomic Keyboard. Let's see. Okay, so this is over the the overview. Yeah. yeah you know, see. it's mechanical keys. They use um, Cherry MX Brown. That's the name for the mechanism. So um, so it's totally symmetric. So this is a new one. With this is a new one. Uh, the one I have is kind of well. I'll just um, pointing. That's my drink. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the you know the one I'm using. Yeah. Yeah, I have a video on, on on YouTube. You can you know people can look at you know where I introduce this keyboard. Uh, I like you know because I in the past three years I had some problems with uh, RSI, so I started to. You know, look around. You know, find find things about keyboard that's bad, or you know, try to improve the situation. So, so I got this free actually. So that's fantastic, yeah. and I love it. Yeah. So th I mean, there's also Kinesis. A lot of people love that. There's also Motron, and there's recently there's Ergodox. People love that. Yeah, I think those are great. Yeah, I like yeah. symmetric ones. I I used Microsoft 4000 or Microsoft Natural before. Yeah, yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of uh, innovation going on in keyboard design too. It's great to see uh, uh, yeah. people coming up with with different designs and trying them. And, and I see, you know, you're, you're you're taking advantage of all these different keys as well in your uh, in your keyboard bindings. So you're yeah. like, you know, so, um, um, meta keys, sorry, met, menu keys, and all of that stuff. Yeah, I um, it would be great if I can, you know, I I is there a, a package that I know there is like when I type something, it shows on the side, you know, what keys you typed. I know there's one like they use in uh, Vim Golf. You think Vim Golf? Ah, you right? know, I haven't actually like, looked up one yet for for showing the keystrokes. I'm sure there's someone, someone, uh, yeah. someone has to have written it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, in, in lots of Emacs tut uh, tutorial videos, they have that. They use that. They show the keyboard. Um, let me look at list packages here too. Uh, by the way, if anyone listening knows the name of this package, you can use the Q and A uh, to, uh, to to just ask a question that isn't really a question and tell us which package that is. Keystroke. Yeah, I installed it for a while, but uh, let's see, Alpa. Yeah, I can't find it. I think it's Vim. Maybe it's name. I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, I know who knows. I think uh, I know who knows. Philips. Uh, one maybe one of the. I think he, he, you might have interviewed him. Anyway, yeah, you yeah. might have interviewed him before. But yeah, they are all uh, Emacs gods. <laughs> Well, you mentioned you had a. Uh, uh, you mentioned that you had some interesting things to show us. What do what do you know? What what oh, do yeah. you demo? I wanna, I wanna. I was gonna. You know. I know you're gonna ask about init files. So. 
Oh, which uh, were very large ones. I guess we don't have to walk through the entire thing. I went through it this afternoon, and I was uh, stealing um, little bits for my own config. Yeah. But, uh, what What are some particularly interesting ways that you've could, you've customized Emacs to fit you? Yeah. Um, so I have some things that I here I prepare that uh, I can show you uh, share screens. So yeah, you know, some commands. Google the Google Hangout screen, and on the left okay. side you'll see a green icon with an arrow on it. Okay, so and you set to share uh, either your entire desktop or a specific screen. Okay. Share screen. Where did my screen go? <laughs> okay, there it is. Okay, things are happening. I'm seeing blackouts. Okay, I can see your screen. Perfect. You can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yeah, great. So I want to show you. Okay, I. Okay, I think you know most of the time today I um. I uh, do live blogs, so you know you can chat with Sasha. Uh, you want to, uh, maximize this so that you can that we can and uh, okay. change the yeah. font scale. Yes. Yeah, so, is it uh, yeah. is this good? Yeah. Okay. So most of the time I write, um, I spend a lot of time writing blogs. So I might show you something <laughs> here. Yeah. So uh, okay. So this is my Emacs blocks. So let me close the window. This. Uh, sure. Is this actually your to-do list as well? <laughs> yeah, kind of. So I kind of wrote, yeah, that's, uh, I commented out. It's, uh, you know, like for tomorrow or next day about, you know, my uh, UX block. Wow. So, so, yeah, I kind of commented out. So, like, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's do that and select, go down, and uncomment it. So, so I, okay, preparation of the interview. Okay. In any case, oh yeah, I want to show you this command. So like, I want to capitalize this, uh, and I call this command, and that is that. Uh, notice that four is not capitalized. Oh yeah. It only capitalized like, um, you know, uh, proper. I mean, like you know, title. Four yeah, is not yeah. capitalized. It, uh, yeah. Uh, of is not capitalized, and uh, so on. Okay, so this part, I okay, so I want to. Press the key. So that command oh. is uh, <laughs> yeah. That command is uh, so I'll remove HTML tags. So 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 I just removed HTML tags there, and I press another key to um, to make a list out of it. And wow. that is that is uh, that line to HTML list. So I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, stop me. Yeah. No, okay, it's stop me or ask you any questions. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I like gonna go uh, into a monologue. No, no. I, I think it's okay. you know it's really interesting how you've come up with little functions that transform the text. So you know, yeah. I've been using uh, meta C to ch change the case the sentence case a uh, a string, but um, but you know, I have to go fix for and in and all these other things. That's great. Yeah. And um, and all these you know the the way that you bound tab backspace to do something interesting. Uh, that's cool too. <laughs> oh yeah, how do you know? How did how did you know? I heard. Slashed, um, when you did the scribe function, it shows the key bindings. Oh okay okay right yeah. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so you can go through you yeah. can just cycle through the different ways. Yeah. To, uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, that is uh. That that is that. <laughs> <laughs> so most of this command is also in Ergo Emacs. Mm -hmm. So I, so I use you know Ergo Emacs mod. So I use it. I you know I I I I started and I use it for several years. And David um, uh, Capello who joined joined in contributing that code. So he made huge amount of contribution. Before it was just a set of global key bindings. Like you know this it's not a major mod or anything. Then David. David Cavello, he made it into a major mod, like a robust major mod. 
then about last year, like last year January, uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Matthew. Matthew took over. So he he made uh, he added a ton of things. So it's really uh, fantastic, fantastic wow. now. Yeah. But yeah. I unfortunately because of this keyboard, it doesn't have big old keys on both sides. So I stopped using the mod. I kind of started to use my own. <laughs> yeah, for this keyboard, yeah. Yeah, it's funny how the keyboard really influences how we work. Uh, Christian Kluge, Kl 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 anyway, one of our, our viewers actually says, uh, relate the note to Dvorak and the Truly keyboard. The third layer of the Neo layout, apparently, is really great for programming. So, uh, 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 more layouts and uh, and more code. Anyway, so so back to uh, back to email. Okay. Who who does the reader? Are they on IRC or something? Uh, oh, people can use uh, the Q and A app to ask questions. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I keep an eye on that, uh, and I'll I'll bring like, other I, questions up as needed. If I click on the IO show, uh, not anymore, because I've just marked the question as answered. But yes, yeah, that's where okay, they would cool. show up. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay so yeah. So used to write my website. I know. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my uh, okay. I, so I have this command. Oh, okay, some of this command actually, I mean, because you know, I I write a lot of my own commands, but a lot of these are in you know in other in other in packages or you know part of Emacs or in other people's package. Uh, whenever whenever I know some, or if you think of some, uh, you know, let's um, I'll mention it. Yeah, you know, remind me. So clean, clean white space is one of those. Like it just delete. Uh, let, let me turn on um, turn on white space. So white space. Yeah. So clean right, white space just delete um, like all the yeah. double line, double blank lines. So so there's a command. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean there's part of Emacs. Oh, I I I didn't call it, but Emacs has a similar. Um, so anyway, so my init. Oh, that's on GitHub. So this is my init yeah. on GitHub. Uh, command to show. Oh, this one is cool. So I go to so I go to a image directory. Let's say I. Uh, let's go back. So this is all images. Okay, this is yeah. my tr truly ergonomic um, layout. So that's an image. So I yeah. So um, what do I want to do? Oh, I want to scale it. Okay, so let's see. So I uh, press a key and call scale XAR diet scale image. Mm -hmm. And okay, let's say 50%. Let's say a thumbnail 20% sharpen. Yes. Okay, success, success. Now I call diet jump to go to the file location mm -hmm. here. And yeah. I refresh, and you can see it's this one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's. It calls image magic or something like that behind the scenes. Yes. Um, so so it's uh, this command. Uh, okay. So so right. So it basically just call a shell command image magic. Uh, um, yeah. I have these yeah. all these like in a tutorial format on my website. Yeah. Like if you just search uh, diet. Scale image on um on ogoemacs.org. I think you'll find it. Yeah, it must come in really handy when you're putting in screenshots. So, um, so you're blocking. Oh yes, yes, that. that's yeah, that's why I do that. Yeah, all the time. So this this one, uh, I don't know if you have seen it. Pro probably. Uh, so I mean, all these are my files. I'm just uh, like yeah. next buffer into them. Oh yeah, this this. Richard Stallman, uh, Richard Stallman, and uh, Julian Assange. Have you seen this? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah. He, this is like last year, so I, I guess Richard Stallman went to UK to meet uh, meet him. So they took a photo <laughs> together. So like you know, but that kind of thing, I need to make a scaled version or whatever. So I, I yeah, created those commands. And then you um, just use SCP or something like that to copy it over. To, uh, uh, SCP. Uh, sorry, uh, like uh, like uh, like SSH or rsync or whatever to copy the files over. Oh, uh, I 
Uh, yes. Like okay. So I I write this. I mean, this is my Emacs Emacs block, right? So mm -hmm. I write it. Uh, I can press the key to preview it. Yeah. Uh, so right now it's like garbage. So let's let's um, right. So uh, so I can uh, let's say. So for example, this one. Okay, let's say I want to write this. Use this fantastic command. Uh, <laughs> press the key. So that 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 is um. Ah, I see. I see. Yeah, so Rappi, uh, so let's put that there and that there and that there. So also I press another key that kind of make them into that. And that is... Um, huh. Uh, yeah, um, I was looking at your config and I saw how you have some code to translate the corner brackets into uh, into markup. And I was yeah. wondering because your your uh, your web pages always have you know the the control and the the x all those things are individually marked. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah, and I'll show you that. So uh, <laughs> for example, let's say let's say the key is um, control x uh, f. Let's say whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, I want to press that. That okay. So that key is uh, that. Uh, okay. So you just you you just really insert the Unicode characters into it, and you use all these uh, key these yes. key bindings to make it easier to wrap uh, the text. Yes. So mm -hmm. for 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 example, this one now I want to press another key. Uh, this one that becomes code formatted mm -hmm. into code. Uh, so that one is, oops, um, so that one is, I, I started to use Unicode in my command names. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I saw it. Uh, you have all these conversion functions that actually have arrows in their names. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so I, I press another key and this key get turned into um, uh, what you would see in my Emacs. Let me hey, hold on a second. Let me sh uh, so that command is this one. Ah. So let's put it there. Okay. So let's view in browser, and uh, they became all oh, these uh, oh. <laughs> nicely formatted thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I, I was wondering how you did that because basically, when I'm writing my 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 posts, I use org mode, and so I use the equal sign a lot to say, okay, this part here, it's going to show up in in fixed um in, in um in a fixed with font, but uh, oh, I have see. so much more uh I guess um distinction between the different yeah. posts because you're using yeah. Unicode when you write it, and then you yeah. get to specific uh, tags. Yeah, yeah, I try to use Unicode. Yeah, m most of these are not like, it's not that coherent or like a system. I kind of just build them one by one over the years, you know, and oh. I keep changing them, yeah. That's actually something I'm curious about because a lot of people also, they, they, you know, we build up our config one by one, but it's hard to keep it all organized. Uh, and I, I see that you, you've actually split up your config into multiple files and you've worked on kind of having a consistent key binding uh, approach to it? Yeah, I kind of, <laughs> I mean, just, I, you know, I just, my config mostly, I mean, I only I use it. So I change it, like key bindings, I change it almost every week. Really? Um, Wow. Yeah, How do like you I I have to think about this is uh, like 0.0001 percent more efficient. Then I must change to that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hard so, time remembering the key bindings that I set. Like I I'm I'm trying to use um meta space right now for ace jump mode, and it's still hard to get used to it. <laughs> That's only one key yeah. binding. You're changing a lot more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like right now. I I almost do not use any of the default key binding. The only one I use is the four arrow keys, the and F one, <laughs> and the control H. That's about it. I so mean, okay. You... I also page up and down. Everything else is like my own uh, choice. So how do you practice using the keys for things that you use less frequently, and and also what happens to you when you sit down at somebody else's Emacs? Oh, I froze. It's like I don't know what to do. Like oh. if you take out my key bindings, I'm. Yeah. It, it's like I'm starting to use WordPad, you know. <laughs> so I have to like, 
you know, just set set up, you know, give me 10, 15 minutes to set up my, I don't, um, I haven't, you know, I, yeah, so I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how that will, would work out if you're working a company, so, you know. <laughs> um, Mark Segesser says you can use mwe-log-commands, so I'm guessing that's a package or maybe it's built in. mwe-log-commands. Dash, uh, oh, oh, okay. Yes, it's oh, a command. Wait. It's mwe log commands. And, and that shows keys or commands as they are typed. Oh, okay. I see. Log dash commands. Okay. Is it? That's not default, right? I mean, it's yeah, a package. Yeah, mwe log. I see it. Oh, uh, for me, it's mwe colon log keyboard commands, but uh, let's... Hang on a second. I, I saw it in these packages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it is a package. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says log keyboard commands to buffer. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Oh, that's cool. I should use that. That's that's excellent. I really love the fact that we have this, you know, we have package repositories and, and Melpa and Normland and all these other, uh, you know, just lists and lists of interesting packages to try. So that's all good news. Uh, you, you mean you mean the pack package repository? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, Melpa and uh, Marmalade and, and so many. Yeah, it's okay. fantastic. Okay, so uh, so you've 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 extensively customized your keyboard shortcuts, but even then you keep changing them, and somehow you just remember everything. <laughs> yeah, it's um. It becomes, I, I guess it became an obsession. <laughs> I mean, even even for me, sometimes that's painful because, like, for example, let's say there are two two keys for a command, you know, two choices. One is involving a control and something, let's say. Uh, and another one, let's say, involves the F1. Let's say you press F889, right, a sequence. Um, but, like, I have to think about, like, do analysis, like, which is really better, you know. Then if I decided that one is better, then I, I try to put it in my init. But that's usually frustrating because uh, I have to change my habit. You know, like like every time I need to use that command, oh my god, where, what, you know, like my, hat, my finger isn't just, you know, I was, uh, you know, still using the old, you know, control H or whatever. So, but sometimes after a while, after a month, you know, I decided it's it's a good change, you know. I get used to, so I, you know, I, I I've, since then I just use the new one. But but sometimes not. Sometimes, if not, you know, I I rethink about what where did my analysis analysis went wrong, or is it just a habit I just uh, didn't throw off yet? So it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that too. Sometimes, um, sometimes I have to unbind the previous key binding just to force myself to start using the new one. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Do a bell or whatever and say, no, no, try the other one. Um, but it's, it's, it's tough changing your habits. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. I remember when I was learning Vorak uh, from QWERTY, I was a QWERTY typist and it was extremely painful. Like it took me two months to barely, you know, can able be able to type type again, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. you learned it. You how long did you? Uh, uh, take it, it took me a month of a month. really slow okay. typing, but that was okay. you know it was summer, so I didn't really need to type all that much, which meant I I could stay in the war more often. Um, so that was I that see, was but helpful. Do you still use war or do yes. you use both? No, uh, actually, I I mostly use war Um, and I okay. I. Even on other people's computers, I sometimes use auto hotkey to just to change it quickly, uh, so so that I can I, I can type without having to think too much. But I can still type on QWERTY. I'm just less. Happy oh yeah, doing that's it. amazing. Yeah, yeah. But you can. So you lost your. I kind of lost it, you know, because I haven't have I haven't had any. Every time I go to a library, you know, I remember, you know, back in the 1990s. Every time I yeah. go to a library, I can type. I have to hunt and peck, you yeah. know, and people think, oh, that guy doesn't know how to type. So, but uh, but back in around 2000, sometimes I have to type on other people's keyboards. So I picked up a little bit quality again, but it's about like 30 30 words per minute. Yeah. And forever it stayed there. I never. <laughs> 
different edge anywhere with QWERTY. I if you it, ask me, yeah. yeah. Right. If you ask me to type QWERTY now, it's probably gonna be 10, 10 words per minute. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be really dependent on the keyboard I'm using too. So, so, so for example, yeah. I'm very used to typing Dvorak on my laptop keyboard and now on the original keyboard that I have plugged in. But I was trying to help someone with Emacs and he was on a Mac and he was in QWERTY and he was in evil mode. <laughs> So, uh, okay, even yeah. though I use I use no, VI and yeah. I understand the keyboard shortcuts, I was like, wait, my brain can't handle with all these different changes at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> you, you use uh, Vim as well, right? I mean, uh, uh, sometimes, it, but I very see. rarely because most of the time I just already have Emacs open. So maybe if I'm SSH'd into some place and I, I'm not opening something through Tram, then I'll use Vim. But um, how, how even on my servers, I, uh, I I don't know. Um, it it certainly evil mode is very popular these days because yeah. first people are coming over from Vim and also because you know people think oh command mode right I th I think Ergo yeah. Emacs has a command mode now as well it's just a, you know. yes yeah I certainly use that and also I believe also in Ergo Emacs yeah Matt he did he did great work it, right now it's using a, a new engine but but yeah but yeah it, it's it's there as well. Yeah. But you have to ask them how to what's the command to invoke that. So yeah, because yeah. it evolved, yeah, over the year. Yeah, and I'm I'm still in mostly mostly Emacs key bindings, except for the parts that I've changed, and I can't really remember what I've changed sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So so that's why I've been using uh, John Wigley's uh, use. Uh, sorry, his bind key package, which He's, at least, I see. Uh, so he has a bind what? key package that right. lists all what? of your personal key bindings. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also cool. it, it shows you uh, kind of what that key binding replaced so that you, I see. You know, when you're trying to tell somebody else, oh, you just press this and this and this, you're like, no, yeah. actually that only works for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, uh, what's the name of the package? Bind dash key, so bind key. I, oh, I see. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it also has a slightly uh, cleaner syntax for me in terms of uh, key binding. So you see there how it no longer uses the KBD around the uh, the actual key. So that's kind of cool. It doesn't actually use what? Uh, so for example, if you look at the second argument, so that's the first argument to bind key. It doesn't have a KBD macro around. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, and then oh, you, yeah, can, right, right. you can tell it to override everything that uh, uses that key, which I actually don't use. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay. So that's, that's oh, okay, what I mean, cool. Basically. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so key bindings are one of the things that you've you customized, and you have a lot of these little functions to make your HTML publishing easier. Uh, are there other, you yeah. know, particularly interesting things that you're doing with your Emacs? Uh, uh, functions. It mostly, I think. Okay, let me think what other things that could possibly be. I no, I don't think so. I, I remember oh. seeing your video. There's quite something interesting, you know, like talk, chatting to a, a a music or something. No, I don't have nothing like that. It's all <laughs> just. One of the things I was going to ask is I, I realized that you're using tab for a lot of your keyboard shortcuts, and so you yeah. you know so how. Do you still do indenting? Do you, yeah. <laughs> do you just not do oh, yeah. Let me tell you how uh, my key works. So I like I I stop using any kind of cold key as much as possible. At one point I almost even don't want to use shift key to type anything anymore. So anyway, That's so you have you have yeah. a lot of translates there that use uh, three characters in order to type in a yeah, shift uh, exactly. shift character. Yeah. Yeah, I commented it out because, I mean, every time you make some changes like that, you know, that's at odds with, uh, you know, normal, like, in a library or whatever. So it kinds of get harder and harder. I mean, my, my binding is already um, <laughs> completely unrecognizable. So anyway, so I didn't use that. So, I mean, the, the thing I, so I don't use codes, so, but I use key sequences. And one of the keys menu to start it, the lead key, I think that's what Evil Mod calls it. Mm -hmm. The lead key is menu, so uh, is the menu key. And uh, so the other key, okay. So menu key is a global, uh, and the other one is uh, for me is tab. I choose tab because 
I mean, and you you only have so many keys. You like yeah. so. I eventually choose tab. So so tab is for um. Ooh. How for, do you do that? Uh, <laughs> oh, I guess yeah. you could that um that mark things up also adds those little icons. <laughs> yeah. So I I you know I type the uh, okay. I type okay. this key. Uh, I type this. Uh, so which is, uh, you know, so okay. Yeah. So so this command. Yeah. This command just adds the brackets. I mean these brackets. So like so like menu. Uh, I highlight it and uh, press the key and it becomes that. Yeah. Okay. Then I select this. Uh, then I press. A key and it becomes that. Nice. So so now it's ready to be published in HTML. I should, I should add more Unicode to my blog. <laughs> uh, Unicode is yeah. having too much fun with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. Emacs, I I I haven't really actually like seriously looked into what I mean about the question, but I think Emacs is probably the best Unicode um, tool uh, to get information or whatever. Uh, you you know like like you can call this command um, gotcha and it'll tell you everything about the Unicode. Yeah, I remember I came across Control X eight Enter, uh, and then I was like, holy cow, we have a snowman in here. <laughs> <laughs> control X Enter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause, sorry, Control X eight uh, uh, yeah uh, to insert a right. character by name. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It's interesting. It's try like that. Uh, okay, so you have your me me menu for global key bindings and tab for mode specific ones, uh, yeah. and and so you just define a lot of these. Yeah, there you go, snowman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So so menu is the lead key for global, and uh, yeah. So and uh, the tab is the lead key for mod specific. And my plan is that every time I use mod I like I like any any special command or key in that mod I pretty much pick out what I want to use and start to use uh set set my key mm -hmm. for that. I mean, you know I is all this is not really planned out. I mean that's just like gradually I just kind of do a little bit one thing here and there and now it's that. I'm I'm pretty sure it's not robust like like if one day I really have to write in a lot of different languages, I don't have time, you know, to look at that package, all the keys it yeah. does, and which one I really want to change. Yeah, so I, you know, that's gonna be just CC, CC whatever. Mm. So I guess maybe that's also where you might say I, I'm going to I'm going to remap these key bindings to these other key bindings so that in general anything that's bound to this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So that that explains a couple of your uh, trans, you know, uh, key binding translations in your config. Uh, so you yeah. you tend to add these con these uh, key bindings a little bit at a time. But somebody yeah. installing Ergo Emacs, you know, has to deal with all these different key bindings right off the bat. Do you have any tips for people who are you know kind of oh, trying to Ergo optimize Emacs. their use as well? Uh, yes. Ergo Ergo Emacs is uh, uh, it's 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 fantastic, <laughs> so, but it's okay, also yeah. hard for people to learn. <laughs> I'm guessing. Yeah, I know. You know, Matt, Matt, uh, uh, Matthew uh, Fittler is doing the work yeah. now. So, um, so there's a lot of things there. I mean, look, right now it like right now it uh, it's all it tries to be compatible with with everything because it it actually got an engine. It doesn't directly specify define a key. Ah, like when you okay. press a key, it it goes into whatever mod you are and find out you know any incompatibility or, or whatever. So, um, so so uh, it, it's it's so good. Um, I'll go Emacs mod. So you know th right now it is like uh, tens of files. I I don't really know how it works these days. <laughs> it's it's fairly com complicated. Yeah and. Yeah, every day nice. there's like, like yeah, he's bug report and he's like fixing it. Uh, yeah, it's on GitHub. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's yeah. Cool. Cool. So, okay. So so this is a way for it. It actually doesn't force you to learn everything uh, from the beginning. You can 
you can go into it slowly, which is nice to know. Yeah, it'll go Emacs. Let's see if I can turn it on. Uh, I, I, I have my That's unit okay. now, so anyway. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Okay, so uh, but so so every time you notice yourself using a modifier key or whatever, you just add a new key binding and and go from there. And I noticed yeah. that you have a function that makes it very easy for you to open different files. Yeah, yeah. That you frequently access, so that probably makes it even easier for you to add key bindings. Cool. Yes, yes, that's the that's the that's uh, this one. Oops. Yeah, okay. I was in insert mod. Uh, let's look around my previous. I no wait. Okay, that, wait. No, it's not. Oops. Second. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can I still type? <laughs> uh, okay, here, here, here yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, so I just I press the key. Let's say, let's say I close my Emacs. Um, I mean my blog. Yeah. So now I want to go to Emacs. I open my Emacs blog. So I just press, and it gives me a list of uh, whatever yeah. these are frequently used files. So you know, three is for Emacs. So I'm back on e Emacs. Mm -hmm. So that so that's this um, command. Cool. I've been using registers for much the same purpose, but uh, of course oh, that means okay. I have to use single character shortcuts to jump to them, and I can't overwrite anything in the register. So having a command that actually just prompts you for stuff might be the better way to do it. Yeah, I was using bookmarks. Uh, but eventually, the one issue I find with bookmark bookmarks is uh, let me see where is my is that um, like like you have to there is, like once you open a bookmark there there is no key that lets you open one specific fi specific file uh, right away like you have to mm -hmm. arrow down to it first so that yeah you see uh, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah so Short so cut. that's the one thing that got me started to you know do do uh, that what the what the one I have instead. The other one I really use I uh, use really often is this uh, open recent um, open recent um, uh, open recent no okay so uh, yeah. but. Okay, let me go back to Emacs. So, uh, keep pressing. Ah, re re recent, recent mm. open files. That's one I use often. Huh, I should try that. Yeah, because for the top ten most used files uh, totally today or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you can just. You can just press a number and you'll jump to that. Yeah. So like these days, I almost never, I hardly use, you know, find file anymore, uh, yeah. because you have to type the path and, you know. Yeah. Hmm. I I was um when I was reading your config, I was looking around for keys to uh to bind to to some of these um. Uh, Keyboards, this is sequences, right? And I realized oh, yeah. my apps key is actually completely not used. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Uh, okay. Start yeah. finding more things. Yeah. Are you, so you are on your uh, PC keyboard? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I see. I actually uh, use my Windows key a lot, so it has to be the apps key then. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. this is all good. Uh, you know, keep an eye out for keyboard shortcuts and redefine them, uh, and then keep tweaking things. In order to make it even easier to use, so I, yeah. I really like the fact that you have all these little functions that just do that job, or you know, prompt for more information and then take you to yeah. places or fix things or whatever. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, before I forget, one of the things that you mentioned in our email conversation leading up to this was, uh, you know, the kind of the the Chinese Emacs community, and there's 
I guess, you know, there's because uh, I don't read Chinese, I read a little bit of Japanese, and I know from just searching on Twitter, there's a lot of conversation that happens in the non-English Emacs community, or communities, because there are lots of them. What's it like yeah. with that, you know, Chinese Emacs community? You know, what's popular, or, or you know, what, uh, what are we missing out on by not reading Chinese? <laughs> uh, I guess... Um, not much, actually, because I mean, after all, it's Emacs. It's you know, it's English. It's uh, or engine is English. So I mean, Chinese people. I mean, I think the in the last few years they've begun. Um, China, they, they there's a lot of programmers there, you know, in companies. So I was actually surprised, like uh, in late 2000, like 2008 or something, like it, there's a lot of Chinese people on uh, Comp dot Emacs or GNU dot help dot emacs or dot emacs help i mean those chinese names so and the, and some of them really write uh excellent packages like you know non trivial packages so so that's how i started to know about you know chinese people uh using emacs so so um so in so let's see what they talk about uh they they are just same as here. I mean, asking yeah. questions. So yeah, uh, uh, some use Emacs, some use Vim, uh, and 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 uh, the other thing in China, uh, Chinese programming community is that there's huge amount of uh, copying, uh, translated info. Like oh. like here we have you know tech crunch or or whatever you know news media or, or or emacs blogs so you often see that translated into uh chinese just by somebody and post it on some website with their own ads so so anyway so it's yeah a lot most of them also i mean they they most most of them also read english but i think Chinese in, in Chinese is still more natural for them. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I try sense. to write. Yeah. I try to write Chinese sometimes, but my Chinese typing is super slow. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to bring more uh, people into the conversation. Yeah, there's one thing that okay. They have one. Um, I I believe Emacs Wiki also support Chinese. So there oh. is some. Uh, yeah. There's some. Uh, Chinese in uh, Emacs wiki, uh, but but some people in China they also have a dedicated like Emacs uh, oh, uh, Chinese yeah, website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is available in multiple languages. That's nice. Uh, I, I would have to find out what's the oh, URL, but yeah. But yeah. well, it's so, good to yeah. see it. It's good to see it growing in popularity and and. Um, and people having all sorts of interesting conversations. I know I often use Google Translate just to get the sense of what people are talking about because it all looks so interesting. Yeah. 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 So okay. So I picked up a lot of tips from our conversation. You know, things like yeah, customizing your keyboard shortcuts and playing around the things. Maybe someday playing around with some of those keyboard designs that you're looking into. That might be interesting for a lot of people also. Um, what's next for you? You know, what are you what are you curious about, or what do you want to tweak Emacs to become? I uh, I hope Emacs can you know grow uh, the Emacs engine. I mean the Emacs software itself. Like there are there are there are um, improvements people are suggesting, like using. Uh, uh, was it Guile? Yeah, Guile, uh, Guile yeah. like Scheme. Lisp, you know, to replace Emacs Lisp. So I think that would be a great, great step. No, I don't, I don't know how good it is. I mean, there's also always controversies like, oh, it's not good enough. Well, but I mean, Emacs being around for a long time, and a lot of people, especially younger people, they, you know, they, they are not familiar with it. They, they are not going to bother, you know. So anyway, I, I hope, yeah, I hope the Emacs Lisp engine. Uh, improve like give us lots of functions uh, uh, features comparable to let's say uh, Ruby or you know modern languages yeah or, or even common Lisp you know that there's tons of functions there so instead of each of us you know downloading packages like oh this one I need to use so it, I hope it's all in Emacs <laughs> yeah. for, for good in the future yeah. yeah, I know that even with Emacs Lisp as it is, I, you know, I still haven't even reached 
anywhere near the limits of it. So, uh, but it's great to see yeah, what yeah. people are doing with. Um, uh, I'll be talking to someone who's working on the foreign function interface, and you know, other people are working on getting, uh, you know, more oh, yeah. coding or things like that into Emacs. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, and in the meantime, I'm, you know, I'm really glad you've been writing about Emacs for so long, and you have so much out there. You've put together a tutorial that people can actually buy and download and read through. Yeah. Uh, and and um, and I hope that gets a lot more people into Emacs Lisp as well. Um, and yeah, hey, you know. Since RSI is an occupational hazard for us, you know that reminder to hey, you don't have to put up with uh, with uh, keyboard shortcuts that have like four or five keys that have to be pressed at the same time. No, you can just do you know, one yeah. key after the other. Yeah. That's a useful reminder. Okay, uh, any last words for em Emacs chat listeners? Any recommendations for people you who would like to who you would like to see on this uh, uh, podcast thing? <laughs> Last recommendation and what? What's the uh, other so, one? So, uh, can can you think of other people who who might be good to hear from on one of these Emacs chats? Anyone you you know you would like to hear you know how they got started with Emacs or what they use Emacs? Oh for? yeah, oh yeah. Uh, uh, you already interviewed most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, it's it's hard to think of one you know right off the bat right now. But I think. Oh, you you plan to have a conversation with a uh, technomancy, right? Yes. That I mean, if, if, if that's he's Philips. Uh, that would so be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that would be great. Who else? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, the the the, the current uh, two leaders of Emacs, the Stefan something, and. Uh, and also, uh, I think he's Chinese, but I mean the current two maintainers of Emacs. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, I will work up the courage. But in the meantime, it was great <laughs> to hear your story. Um, great to hear about yeah how you got into Emacs and how you've been customizing it, and the fact that you went eight years without customizing it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so continue to have fun, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to end the broadcast now. To everyone who's tuned in, thanks for listening. The recording will be available on the event page shortly after I end this. And also, I'll be putting it up along with the transcripts eventually on emacslife.com. Uh, Sal, where's the best place to find you online? Uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Uh, Ksali, uh, you know, is my handle. Ksali yeah. underscore Lee. Yeah, so, so. find, find uh, at, at, on Twitter at um, uh, Sa underscore Lee, that's X-A-H underscore L-E-E, -E, and, um, and see you all. Thanks. Thank you so much. For sure. All right. Bye. Bye.